better places to spend the hallows than a 13th century castle near the lashing coast of Devon? I think not. In autumn, the door opens wide to the ancients who have passed yet speak of great loves and prod me to assume my crumbling flesh unto the end, or fly from the crumbling now, and thus spirit away. Now the apparition of the world comes again at its most beautiful and horrific. The brilliant colors of death abound. The piercing wind, the cold rain, and first snows hasten love. Death slithers through my cracks and again obliterates all I thought was mine. Ghosts walk and wake the living with broken hearts they demurely thought might heal. And with tender traces of passion they wildly believed would last forever. The bloody rose gushes in the great hall, I hear moans of ecstasy, screams of raped women, cries of long dead newborns, laughter of children reverberates between the frigid stones, dogs bark for the bones at the great table, voices of fat corrupt men boom above the sweet murmur of their women. Timeless edifices smell of the tombish must of dragon's blood, beauty and horror. In the courtyard, in the green rain, I hear a last fearful prayer, then gasps and the cheers of those who watch the beautiful head lopped off in obeisance to the powerful. Torrents of blood splatter the green grass. In this life, only humans with wings escape the executioner. After the horror dissolves into silence, there is no obeisance for me until the grave dances of May. They are required. I am a man.